Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. All right, good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. I'm enjoying these kind of specials we're doing and kind of updating some tapes that we did quite some time back. The appointed time. That's the subject. Anytime our Father states something in His Word, then, then the time element becomes very important. What appointed time? And of course, He's... It's the question that man has asked since the beginning of time. When is the end going to be? Well, that's what the appointed time is. Our Father knows what that appointed time is. We don't. But He gives us many clues, and occasionally it doesn't hurt to go back, look at the times that He illustrated, mentioned, and gave an example of what it would be like at the appointed time. So I thought we would discuss that and, and look at it in connection with today's current events as we teach it, whereby you can observe and know and perhaps have a better understanding of what's happening in the world because it was written long ago concerning the appointed time. Now, the minor prophets are kind of like reading tomorrow's newspaper. There is more information in the Minor Prophets, so we're going to draw from one of those Minor Prophets, the one whose name was Habakkuk. Habakkuk um, means to embrace, and the truths expressed here, you had better embrace them, for they are your Father's Word, His advice to you. And he discusses within this the events that were happening then but letting you know it was only an example of what was going to happen at the appointed time. So that makes it very important. Just because we're in what some call the Old Testament, God's, God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and He will be forever. His Word remains forever. This earth age will depart, but this Word, God's Word, never departs. There is nothing new under the sun, that our Father's Word does not familiarize you with before the fact. So, with that having been said, the book of Habakkuk, we're going to start in chapter 1, verse 1. Let's see what we can draw from it. The burden which Habakkuk, the prophet, did see. A burden on who? Well, let's find out. Verse 2, O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. In other words, that's what man, how long, Lord, until you return? How long, Lord, until you save us from the tribulations of this world? Well, violence, look around you today probably more so than any time in history, we even see children participating in violence. Why? Because the moments that we used to spend as a nation and multi-peoples, we were taught to respect each other and to appreciate the dignity of other races, of other peoples and so forth. Unfortunately, since uh, that dignity has been removed from the school systems that you can't even have a moment's silence, and that's what should be, and taught to respect other people's um, beliefs, religions, thoughts, and peoples, then it has waned away. And rather than dignity and respect, we see confrontation, violence, uh, the reason being, many times starting right at home. Verse 3, 
why dost thou show me iniquity? Why do you let me see all this sin and violence uh, and cause me to behold grievance? Uh, that's to say oppression, uh, uh, a mile in the Hebrew tongue, injustice. Why do you let me see all this injustice? For spoiling and violence are before me. And there are that uh, raise up strife and contention. And those things will always be with us until the appointed time. You can rest assured of that. But learning from your Father's Word, you will learn how to deal with those things. And Father will protect you even in this generation from many of those things if you understand what's happening in the world. Verse 4. Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. It seems like it's, it's plea bargain here and put off there and never a stand here. And a, a murderer may have to maybe prolong uh, 20 years before he finally pays his price uh, as requested by God's word. For the wicked doth compass. It would seem that the wicked compass about the righteous, that there's more of them, yes. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. We have in present day, rather than attaining to strict law, as law was originally taken from the Word of God, we now practice what is called the law of precedent. And precedence regardless of what, and many might argue against this point, be that as it may, but I feel that precedents grow more lax and lax and lax, and at one time there was no such thing as a precedent set if the law said yea or nay. And that's the way it was. But we go by man's traditions and precedents uh, in this day and time, and therefore it seems that justice is never done. Verse 5. Behold ye among the heathen, and regard the wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe, though it be told you. In other words, before that time, even before that appointed time, God's going to work a work that most people wouldn't believe if you shared it with shared with them the information. And naturally, he's talking, well, let's, let's let him say it. Verse 6, For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. Now, what is he talking about? Well, in the actual type that took place, we had a good idea. You could see it if you study history. But who were the Chaldeans? They were the Babylonians. That Babylon of the book of Revelation has spread throughout the land, which what is Babylon? It's Babel, confusion. Confusion of law and justice. Confusion, even if you would, of our Father's very word, that the traditions of men which make void his absolute that is to say, yea or nay on law, has even worked into the religious circles whereby traditions of men and, and church organizations supersede the basic law and ways of God. Unfortunately, many would disagree with that, but it's true. How many of you attend church where you're taught God's Word chapter by chapter, verse by verse, or you go by a church quarterly. Now perhaps that's a little unfair because there are good quarterlies. But I prefer to teach directly from the Word of God. So thus confusion. A, a poor unbeliever and, and uh, anyone that is not Christian was called a barbarian or a heathen. Uh, be that as it may, may be a little unkind by today's standards, but it simply means a non-believer a non-believer in Yahweh, the living God. And unfortunately, you have many of those today. And the confusion goes throughout the nation, throughout the world. The reason I'm drawing on these things is I want you to see how modern 
this chapter is to this day, when you take it in that futurist sense, that is to say, towards that time that God calls his appointed time. Verse 7. They're, they are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Uh, they do as they wish, and no one can alter that. They set a law, you're judged by it, and that's the way it is. Many times the righteous do not win, but they always win if God is with you and you don't give up. God will always give you the victory. Verse 8, their horses also are swifter than the leopards. That, that means their power. Okay, Horses are always symbolic of power, even as horns are and are more furious, uh, are keener than the evening wolves, always out for the kill. And their horsemen shall spread themselves, and their horsemen shall come from far. And they shall fly as the eagle that hasteth uh, to eat, meaning they're hungry. They're starving to consume you. How does that fit today? We're talking about eagles. We're talking about horsemen. How does, how does confusion travel? Well, the media, the, the method of media which you're now observing, television, uh, we push a button in northwest Arkansas and cover a third of the earth, earth's surface, bam, just like that, in, in seconds. That's swiffer than the eagle well enough. And... Naturally, that media is most often used in other senses than carrying forth the word of God, the word of Babel, confusion. It, goes, it rings the earth now in, in uh, nanoseconds. Well, that would be a little, that would be a little untrue, but, but in seconds. And, and so it is. It's come to pass. That's what I'm telling you. How many would have, God said he would work this work that not many would believe at that time if they were told. How many, how many people um, at my birth, that is to say in the 20s, would say, yeah, we're going to hang a vessel out there in space, 22,300 miles, and we're going to be able to shoot pictures up at it, and, and those pictures will be able to be observed in everyone's home. That would have been unbelievable. And now, all the way around the world, think about it. We grow so callous to new things, and many times they were written of long ago. Worldwide, um, one worldism, the media, instant media is very necessary to bring about the new world order and one worldism as they are hungry for it and rush and hasten to it. Verse 9, they shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind. That means they're eager and the east wind is always hot. And they shall gather the captivity as the sand or like sand they will take captivity captive, captive with their confusion, their lies, the beliefs that they would cause people to believe in, to have faith in a new world order to bring peace, peace. Uh, you've heard it many times. Ten. And they shall scoff at the kings, and the princes shall be a scorn unto them. They shall deride every stronghold, for they shall heap dust and take it. That means whatever mound, that's a, that, like it used to, a wall, they would build a mound and walk right over it. All right? When you see the four hidden dynasties of the end times, and you're familiar with them from our Father's word, the hidden dynasty of the political, the, the um, economy, world economy I'm speaking, the dynasty of education, 
and the dynasty of religion. When you see that dynasty of the economy today, as you see world trade is just a common statement uh, that anyone can trade anywhere and the super uh, officials of GATT have the ability to correct people regardless of what the president, the Congress, or anyone might say of a nation. This has come to pass. And on it goes. They take it. They override opposition. Verse 11. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and offend, imputing this his power unto his God. In other words, we're going to see a false God come into being. You know it if you've studied with me any length of time, the false Messiah. Verse 12. Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord God? Mine Holy One, this is his prayer, we shall not die. O Lord, thou hast ordained them for judgment, and it is written he has. And O mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. He begins to remember God's word rather than crying into his soup or being all caught up in the activity, the evil activities of today to know that God told you long ago that the superpowers would do exactly what they're doing, that we would come into this new world order, that the world economy would, would be not visible to most, but a one world economy. And if you don't think we're building to that, you've been asleep in the last year. You're living in those times, verse 13. The, uh, Habakkuk begins to realize that God said, hey, this is going to happen. I'm allowing them to do this to try to get people's attention, to give them a little paddling that they'll turn back to me rather than the false one. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil. Uh, he's kind of apologizing here. And canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he. The Antichrist will try to destroy or convert. That's how you work confusion is by conversion. 14. And makest men, Adam in Hebrew, as the fishes of the sea, Have you ever seen the little fishes in the sea? They have a school and the whole one little fish turns this way and the whole bunch turns this way. This little fish turns that way. They all turn that way. They all swim as the creeping things. And usually when they migrate, they all creep and go together. That have no ruler over them. It would appear that that's the way people are of this world that, haven't, that realize they that do not realize they have a destiny, that God has a purpose, that things are happening by His perfect order of things, by allowing the chaos that you see, when all you have to do is turn to Him and rise above it. If you would, even a form of resurrecting, raising to a higher level of thinking, and bringing yourself above, using common sense and His Protecting wing. 15. They take up all of them with the angle. You know what that is? They catch them in their net. The whole little bunch. The peoples of the world swim into their little net and gather them in their drag, a drag net. Therefore, they rejoice and are glad. And so it is with the world, the new world order, setting, setting up the one world system for its one world ruler. And that's the subject here. 
You have read it in both the New Testament and the Old. You have heard it repeated that he will have this power of um, almost hypnotizing, if you would, with, the, with his flood of lies as they pour from his mouth as recorded in Revelation chapter 12 to entrap even the elect, if that were possible, it is not. 16. Therefore they sacrifice unto their net, not God, but to their system. Their system is the thing. And burn incense unto their drag, the liberalism of the world burning uh, and worshiping the way rather than Almighty God because by them their portion is fat and their meat plenteous. Why? The people are ready to swallow anything, hook, line, and sinker that seems new. And when they are in confusion, they, uh, it is common nature that a human being must hang on to something. They must believe in something. And it would seem that because the so-called church has received such a bad reputation, don't, don't think it's any accident that the church has given a, been given a so-called bad reputation that people are almost unpopular to call themselves a Christian. It's planned to have the little schools of fishes swim away from the real word of God. And many times, men were lied about that brought the reputation upon their character and they were not strong enough to kick in the teeth the offender and push them away from them. Lies cannot prevail against truth. But that's what's happened. They worship their one world, new world order, their oneness, more so than the Father himself, the creator of their very being. That is ignorance in its highest degree. They worship the God of forces as it is, as it is written in Daniel chapter 11, verse 17. Shall they therefore empty their net and not spare continually to, to slay the nations? Will they let their little fishes go? Question. <laughs> not until God kicks some sense in their head. Now that may offend some to hear it stated that way, but that's exactly what the time appointed is for. Chapter 2, verse 1, the thought continues. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. That's to say what God will answer me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. In other words, this is what a watchman is supposed to do. It's what you're supposed to do. When you see this going on, you're supposed to watch, observe, and see God's overall plan unfolding before your very eyes. And only a person that is biblically illiterate and blind to God's teachings cannot see today. It does not take much of a watchman to see the unfolding of the appointed time. Verse 2, And the Lord answered me. Now comes the answer. Listen up. And said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tablets. You write it large. Put it on a signboard where people can see. And, and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that readeth it. In other words, let it be a warning when you see the false Messiah, the false one world ruler, when all peoples are running into his net of deception and lies. Uh, three, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. There is our subject. An appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. In other words, you can count on the word of God. You will see these things come to pass. Though it tarry, wait for it. That requires patience. Do you have it? Because it will surely come. 
it will not tarry. How are you fixed, friend? That's the word of God. You're living in that time today. That the appointed time grows closer and closer and closer. I want you to turn back with me to the book of Daniel, where again, this great prophet is speaking. We're going to take it at verse um, chapter 8, verse, um, uh, pick it up at 19. This is the time that Daniel is talking about the coming and appearing of this same false one that comes in by governmental peace. That is to say the spurious Messiah. Verse 19, and he said, behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation for at the time appointed, I repeat, at the time appointed, the end shall be. Now that's the question of men. What is he talking about? Now, if we can, I'm I want you to roll the character generator ahead. You would have been warned of media Persia, which is Iran, Iraq of today, of how the battles of the he goat would go on there from the king of Greece. Huh? But I want to come right down to the subject matter for the, safe, for the sake of time. Move ahead to the 23rd verse. Move ahead to the 23rd verse, and I'll let you catch me there as I begin to teach. Nation will stand out against nation, but not in his power, but in the power of God as he brings nations into the one world, new world order. The appointed time is very near the end. So I come for this specific subject to verse 23. And in the latter time of their kingdom, that one world system, when the transgressors are come to the full, that's to say their little net is full, they have it well under control, a king of furious countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And of course, this is the spurious Messiah. He is the one that heals the deadly wound to the new world order that is received, I feel, very not too far in the distant future. Verse 24, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. In other words, he sets up a false Godhead and God allows it. God allows it to check out his children to see how well they are familiar with the letter that he has written. And he shall destroy wonderfully. How does he do it? and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. He's going to try it. He will deceive many of them. And you might say, if it were possible, he would do this. God will not allow that. 25. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. He's going to work miracles. Big daddy of religion. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. That's been Satan's problem from the beginning of time. Pride in Ezekiel 28, 18 and 19 brought about his downfall in the first earth age. How does he do all this? And by peace. Let me say that again. And by peace shall destroy many. And he shall, he shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Do you know why? Because God will do it at the appointed time. But by peace, by world peace, 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 into a one world system where there is no nation aside from it that can war against another nation. 26, and the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told is true, wherefore shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. In other words, it's going to be a long ways away, Daniel. Well, we're a long ways away from Daniel's days, 2,500 years plus.
And we are at that time where the signs of the appointed time are very prominent. And I don't say this to frighten anyone because you don't have to be afraid. Example, what is this evening and morning? It's talking about the evening and the morning oblation. Do you know what that is? That's the evening and the morning offering to God. What did that become? It's a question. It became the offering for sin. That was done away with by who? By the true Christ. Hebrews chapter 10. That he became the offering for one and all times. But it would be the imposter of that offering. The spurious Messiah. In pride saying, I am God. Or as it is written in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Sitting on Mount Zion showing the world that he is God. With his supernatural um, capabilities. You know that Daniel, we're going to turn ahead to the 11th chapter of Daniel. I'm zeroing in on the subject, the appointed time, all right? We're going to, t to find in this 11th chapter, which leads to the same appearing of this same one, you'll remember one understanding the dark sentences. You will remember that Paul said that's the purpose of the gospel armor is to have it on that we don't fight against the power of the arm, but dark sentences and sayings from high places, meaning angelic beings, such as this one. Verse 24 of Daniel chapter 11. He shall enter peaceably. This is that same one that conquers by peace, the one worldism. Even upon the fattest places of the province, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches. Yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time, up until, if I may add, the appointed time. Verse 25. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a great, very great and mighty army, but he shall not stand. Nobody makes a stand. Now, for they, who is this they? They are the Kenites. For they shall forecast devices against him. Why? Because of the one world system. We're talking here about the confrontation of Ezekiel 38 and 39. Many might say, well, that will never come to pass now. For even as those two children were in the womb of the mother, God predicted they would each become a strong nation and that they would fight against each other. Don't worry, it will happen, but they still won't make a stand, verse 26. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. In other words, uh, by deception, by lies, they will fall right into his hand, believing what? That he is God. 27, and both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Now that's why we came here. The appointed time. Want to have a little clue? 28. Then shall he return into his own land, his land, rather, with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. Do you know what? The exploits against the covenant of who? The true God, the word of God. Those, God's election. Verse 29, at the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, and it shall not be as the former or the latter. But if we were to continue and were not, the ships of Chittim, which in the Hebrew tongue is the bruisers. And who bruises Satan? God's elect. Praise God for them. 
God's elect will have their portion in the end times. With those prophecies, why do I do this to frighten people? No, but to prepare you and know that there is nothing to fear other than fear itself, for God has foretold us in his word of the appointed time and exactly what you're supposed to do. No need to fear, no need to run, but to stand bold, to make a stand and to make a difference by understanding his word and knowing those signs, figures, symbols, and events that are happening in your life today are signs that point to the very appointed time. We'll pick this up in the next lecture. Hey, if I were you, I wouldn't miss it. All right, bless your hearts. You listen a moment, won't you please? The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the mark of the beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of The Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. All right, bless your hearts. There we are back again. Say, let's have the 800 number, if we may, 1-800-643-4645. That number good from Puerto Rico throughout the U.S., including Alaska, Hawaii, all over the North Country, Canada. If the spirit moves and you have a question, share it. Now, uh, those of you that listen by short wave around the world at this time, it's so good to hear from you. And your announcer at the end of the hour will give you our mailing address. If you have a prayer request, he's your father. <clears throat> there are many people at this time of the year that grow uh, rather depressed. I really don't know why. I really don't because it is a time of excitement as we move closer to that day that our Father returns, that the Son returns. He knows exactly what's happening and you, you're never alone as He has promised you. So, a good talk with Him daily and I'm not talking about ritual. I'm talking about talking to him. He hears you and he will touch you. Father, around the globe we come to you and we ask that you lead, guide, direct, comfort, Father, prosper, touch, heal in Yeshua's precious name. Amen. Okay, let's get into some questions here if we may. We're going to go to Glinda and I don't have a state. When will I be able to find peace within myself? If I am baptized, how long will it still take? Well, honey, baptism won't do that for you. It will help. But it takes the Word of God to bring you peace of mind because God's Word lets you understand what's happening in the world and you're not anxious about anything because you see and understand and it gives you joy. Because each time prophecies are fulfilled, it documents God's word that it is true. That's how you find peace of mind by being skilled in his word, allowing the Holy Spirit to lift you and make known to you the answer to your problems. Okay, Marie from Ontario, what does tuhu vabuhu mean? Well, you have um, quoted verse 2 of Genesis chapter 1 in the Hebrew tongue. And it means in that verse 2 that God did not create the earth void and without form, but that it became that way. When? At Satan's rebellion. 
It is made very clear, and I'm going to go by memory now. I hope I can do this. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 18 states very clearly, God did not create the earth void, but to be inhabited. But Satan messed it up, okay? That's, that's what it means, all right? Uh, Nick from Pennsylvania, please excuse my city ignorance. Could you please explain Genesis chapter 30, verses 37 through 43 to me? Thank you. I really enjoy the teachings. Well, it's really, uh, and, and you are excused, you know, if you haven't been around animals. Uh, this was, uh, and he's speaking of when Jacob was, uh, and Laban were about to split and Jacob says, hey, I'll take all the sheep and spotted cattle. And of course, sheep normally are all white, right? Yes. But occasionally you get uh, uh, from um, a spotted or a black ram. And so what he did, these rods were simply what a farmer called fence post, all right? He took rods or cut post, fence post, from the area, and he practiced one of the first known um, practices of animal, animal husbandry. When the ewes would come in heat, he fixed a fence so that they would have to go through where the black rams were. I'll just, that, okay? And the black rams bred the ewes. And the offspring came out spotted. Pretty soon there was spotted sheep everywhere. I mean, Jacob's got more sheep. Jacob was a little, he was sharp, all right? But that's what it was. It was simply a, a, one of the first known practices of animal husbandry. Well planned by him. Joseph from California. In reference to Exodus chapter 30, verse 22 to 30, 24, is sweet calamus sugar cane. It, it is sugar cane. It, it can be called sugar calamus. It is of the cane family. Is, if so, is sugar, will sugar suffice or does a portion of the cane need to be ground? No, it's just the fruit thereof, okay? Cindy from Florida. My husband and I have been together for 20 years, have a great relationship, Good kids, wonderful grandkids. The problem is we were both married before and both our spouses are alive. I have just realized that this marriage is considered in his word to be adultery. I have read every verse I can find and this seems to be something that we can't overcome without one of us dying or getting a divorce. We have both repented been forgiven and are enjoying the change in our lives and the peace of mind which comes with the truth. Now I have found this and realized why his family who practice shunning cannot forgive me. Well, now look, um, Cindy. Can Christ forgive adultery when you repent? And I do not, it's impossible to give uh, advice without knowing all the incidents, but I believe that Christ can forgive even if you were the sinner and brought about your first divorce. If you repent and Christ forgives you, he doesn't want it brought up anymore. So the two of you, if both of you repented for your past sins, then no longer is it adultery and your in-laws are giving you a bad rap. I don't appreciate these people that call divorced people second-class citizens because it's saying that Christ cannot forgive sin. And they mock Jesus Christ and it's as though re-crucifying him that he isn't able. So don't you let them put that guilt trip on you, my dear. Christ talked to the woman at the well who had been married four or five times and was living with a man then she wasn't married to, he converted her and brought about the conversion of quite a few people and used her, forgave her. She had a clean new start. 
Now, it's amazing to me that some churches teach divorce as the unforgivable sin, and it's a lie. And many homes, happy homes, have been upset because of the short-sightedness, the inability of people to understand the languages in which the Word was written that call themselves teachers. You go in peace. You and your husband enjoy each other. And if your in-laws don't like it, give them a message from good old Pastor Murray. They're ignorant, all right, if that be the reason. Tell them I said so. I don't like people trying to play better one-upmanship. You really goofed, didn't you? And probably they, each one of them probably has a greater sin than you, and they get rid of their guilt trips by dumping on you. All right? I think I've said enough. Have a happy season, okay? Enjoy your husband, and may your husband enjoy you. You are free and clear in God's eyes and are his servants. Jackie from Illinois. What do you mean you will be known by your works? What does naked like a jaybird when you go get to heaven? Well, that's a little bit of my type of teaching, all right? Have you ever seen a little baby jaybird? They're naked, all right enough. But God states in, in the book of Revelation that your apparel that you wear in heaven is made up of your righteous acts. And that's why he says that a lot of you are going to be naked when you get there. But your works are the only thing you can take with you. Read the 14th chapter of Revelation. Sometimes I, little, I throw in a little colloquialism, but it gets the, it, I'm in the business of communicating, and that gets the, commu the thought over, okay? Look in a little birdie's nest and see what you'll look like when you get to heaven if you don't have any righteous acts. That's the way it goes. Mildred from Michigan. Are you saying that there will be just two outpourings of the Holy Spirit, that's to say two Pentecost speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance when the disciples spoke and when Antichrist comes? I really enjoy listening to the teaching. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's not what I'm saying. That's what God's Word states. Peter says in Acts chapter 2, This is that that is spoken of by Joel the prophet. In other words, it's, it's, a, it's a, a metaphor that means this is a sample of what's going to happen on the day that Joel spoke of in the book of Joel. So you have to, this is in Acts chapter 2 concerning the tongue spoken on Pentecost Day. In verse 6 and 7, it makes it very clear that everybody heard it in their own language. In other words, it was every language in the world. Man can't fake that. But that the sons and the daughters will both do this when they're delivered up before Antichrist. That's what Joel was talking about. It's not my words. That's the word of God. Okay? And, and many people get angry at me. Don't get angry at me. Get angry at God's word. And let him shape you up. He'll slap you, uh, uh, your head up against the barn a couple of three times or the woodshed and get your attention if, and maybe get you in shape that he can even use you at that time. I'm not talking to Mildred. I'm talking, I'm talking to those that would get angry at me for saying there were only two times that it's spoken of. That's God's word. Okay, thank you, Mildred. Shirley from Delaware. When the devil brings up before him in the last days, how will, how will he do this? Will they come un into our homes and drag us out? No, 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 no. Um, you will read in Matthew 24 and Mark 13 that your own kin folks turn you in, okay? Why? They think he's Jesus. And any Christian, if they think Jesus is here and you happen to be their daughter, they're going to say, Jesus, have mercy on my sweet little daughter. She loves you, but she's confused, all right? She's been studying the Word on her own, and she's all mixed up. She thinks that you're the Antichrist, so go help her, will you please? And don't worry, he will, okay? There, it won't be with violence. He's, he's a church man, big church man, going to convert a lot of people. Uh, you don't have, there will be no violence, so I'm, I'm going to let that answer your second part. Okay, Charlotte from Canada. Why are children born handicapped? Does this have something to do with the previous earth age? Perhaps they are just as unlucky. No, it's really, 
much of the handicap today is because of the pollution, the fact that we do not obey God's health laws. Also, some of it is caused because we do not follow God's laws concerning the peoples themselves. And um, when and you you have certain diseases that are caused from that particular reason, we do it to ourselves because of our ignorance of God's word in part. But God did, in the case of Paul, leave a thorn in his side and would not heal it. But handicapped children are always given to real special parents. You can always check that out. And a handicapped person, when they witness something about our Savior to an unbeliever, it goes a lot further than even when I would witness or you would witness. Because in many cases, they reach a lot of people. And God has a perfect plan and all things are fair. And unfortunately, when we have a polluted world, we have many things, rashes in our daily life, this, that, and the other from contamination. We do it to ourselves. Don't blame it on God, okay? Earl from Minnesota. Why are the Apocrypha and not included in the King James Bible? Well, well, in the original it was, and in some it is. But in the newer it isn't. Why? Well, it's not canonized, and it uh, cuts down on a lot of printing, and so it is left out. Uh, parts of the Apocrypha should be canonized because the Masara documents them, but be that as it may. Okay, Donna from Canada. During the tribulation of the Antichrist, the Holy Spirit will be working strongly in the elect. Is there any way that we could unknowingly or unconsciously refuse the Holy Spirit during the dwelling, the delivering up without knowing it or meaning to do it? No, 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 no. No, it's pretty well a clear cut, simple, very simple thing in this. The true spirit will be guiding you. The evil spirit has no place in you when you are filled with the true spirit. All right? You just don't have to worry about that. It is not possible. Now, he can be very convincing. And there may be some, it will be so convincing. Christ himself would say in Mark 13 that for the elect's sake he has shortened the days or there would be no flesh saved. So there will be thoughts and minds of uh, are we sure we're right and yes we are. Okay, James from California. How close are we to seeing the events that were stated in the book of Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39 taking place? Well, we're, we're at least, um, you know, that happens at the end of Antichrist's five-month reign. So we have a lot of signs to see before Ezekiel 38 and 39. Do I think we're approaching those days? Answer, yes, I do. But the appointed time, don't miss the next lecture. Lynn from North Carolina. Thank you for taking our Father's gift of teaching his word. You're welcome. I enjoy it. Now, your question, do, did you say that people were born into situations that they deserve? If so, please explain. No, on, only to this extent. Read, it's documented in Acts chapter 9. Uh, it states there that God loved Jacob. He hated Esau while they were still in the mother's womb. It was what they did in the first earth age at Satan's rebellion, okay? Then he mentions that he raises, um, that he raises Pharaoh up to accomplish what he did. And God himself hardened Pharaoh's mind on occasion. So God intercedes in certain lives, but there is a reason from the first earth age. He will intercede in those that are called his elect. But everyone with free will, he will not intercede unless they ask him to. Will the earth be put back on its axis at the seventh trump? I feel it will at the end of the millennium, not until. Okay, but then certainly it will. And we will have grass growing on even the North Poles. Charlotte from Pennsylvania. 
At great risk of being called ignorant, I'm seeking an answer to a question that I cannot find. Exodus 4, verse 24 states, And it came to pass by the way in the end, the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Why would God want to kill Moses? Well, go ahead and read the next verse. It states that Moses' wife then took a sharp stone knife and circumcised Moses' children. Moses, while he was out away from his own people, and especially in as much as he had been raised by Pharaoh, uh, but even there he would have learned uh, they believed in circumcision, but not by the same ordinance that uh, his own people would. But he had failed to circumcise his children. And, of course, uh, uh, that's uh, why God told him, said, you better get your act together. And would have, probably. But Moses circumcised the boys, and, of course, his wife would follow by saying, thou art a bloody man indeed, okay? Today, the circumcision is of the heart, whereby it applies to both men and women. Okay, we're out of time. I love you all a great deal because you enjoy studying our Father's Word. It's so good to be informed of your father's thoughts, emotions, and his love. You find it in his word, and it is indeed a blessing to you. We're brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, it will change your life. Uh, help us keep coming to you once you do that. Now, there's one thing that's very important, especially as we grow closer to that appointed time, and that's this that you stay in His Word. Every day in that Word is a good day, even when there's problems. Do you know why? Jesus Christ is the living Word. Hearing, hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you. The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the mark of the beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of The Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan.